Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit. This is going to be hard. Now, first of all, I want y'all to know that I don't have anything against any city, personally. I really don't. This is just data. That's all it is. And I certainly don't have anything specifically against New York City and Los Angeles. But I just want to explain a few things first about those particular cities in the United States. And for a long, long time, and you guys know this, this isn't a surprise, uh, New York City has kind of lorded it over the whole United States, that they're the best, and that's where all the fashion comes from, and that's where all the money lives, you know, you know what I'm saying. And that's fine, it's just a part of the game, but in this process, you can't have people doing that. You can't have men lording over women you can't have rich lording over poor so this is just a part of the process of leveling it all out think of it like everything on the planet runs even in equilibrium in balance except for humans okay and this is gaia's way of saying okay i'm moving up where everything must be in balance and that includes you guys I've given you a lot of room to play, and you've got to do whatever you wanted to do, but that's got to be over. You've got to grow up, and you've got to come into alignment with the rest of the planet now. And so you will see, that's the reason why you see such a big deal in New York City. It is that leveling, that balancing act that is in the process of happening. The same thing is true with L.A., because New York City and L.A. are like, you know, twins. Uh, they just have divided up the game, so to speak. And I don't think, and most of the time they control all of the media too. And they're under the impression, as with a lot of, I think, city people, um, that everybody wishes they could be them. It's kind of like those movies that you see, those shows that you see, where they have high schools or colleges and there's the popular um, people, the cheerleaders and the jocks or whatever, and, and or the rich kids, and they always portray this that everybody wishes that they could be them. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I never wanted to be them, ever, ever, ever. I was friends with them. Um, I, I, I just never wanted to be them. When I lived in the city, I didn't want to be them. I don't think they comprehend that we really don't want to be like them, that we want to be ourselves, and ourselves are very diverse in many ways, and they don't see that. And it's that kind of thinking and energy, and I mean energy, I'm not talking about individuals in New York City and L.A., I'm talking about the city's energy. Uh, because, yes, I can talk to both of them. And just exactly what you would expect to be the personality, the attitude of New York City and LA is exactly what they sound like. Um, you know, it's like New York City is the twin in the business suit and LA is the twin in the bikini, okay? But they're basically very much like popular kids in high school kind of stomping around acting like they own the world, um, not realizing that the rest of the world is very different. Or, you know, I think New York City called called the rest of us deplorables or people who voted for Trump deplorables. And and all of that is coming to a head now. So what will happen is, is and now LA's keeping their head down for a lot of reasons, but you, know, you hear New York City demanding to be taken care of because after all, they're special. And you can see the whole United States throwing a big old fit and saying, no, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. You're not going to take our resources. You're not going to take our people to go take care of you. And because this is a built up anger that has been developed between New York City and L.A. and the rest of the United States. And this is a frequency that must be reduced and balanced. So that is a part of this process. And it is working. It will work beautifully. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fussing and fighting. Um, as everything is balanced, you know, some people have to come down a bit and others come up a bit to create that balance. And no, I'm not talking about socialism here. 
I'm talking about a frequency balancing and understanding that we are all very different and acceptance of all of the different roles and perspectives that we each have in this experience and a respect given to everybody, no matter what their perspective or their role. That is the balance in nature. You do not, no matter what humans say, a lion in the jungle does not think it's better than a bird. It just doesn't. It just is. And that's what humans have to begin to understand, that it's not about beauty or power or money. It's not about any of that, that there's got to be a respect given to each and every one of us by each and every one of us. And eventually, that respect given to everything on this planet as well. And unless that is done, there will be harsh consequences. So if you approach this balancing act with ease and grace, looking forward to the new balance and peace that will come out of it, then it will feel better and better and better. It does to Stephanie and me for sure, and Michelle, and, and, and a few of you guys. If you don't like that you may be losing something, if you don't like that balance and you fight it, it's not going to stop it. It will occur whether you fight it or not. You're not big and bad enough to, to beat what Gaia wants. And, uh, but it will be painful. So remember, there is consciousnesses like this in all perspectives. So that is true with you, with your family, with your town, with your city, with your state, with your country, with your continent, and all the way up to planetary. And yes, there are, within this solar system, there are also a lot of balancing going on. It's not just happening on this planet, by the way. Everything's attached to everything. It affects everything. Okay, so hopefully y'all, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye now.